Hello everybody, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. And if you're new here, welcome. My name is Victoria Rose. I'm a 25 year old woman of transgender experience, almost 26 girl. And here on this channel, I make all kinds of gender affirming content from tutorials to reaction videos to femininity content like this. So if that sounds like fun to you, make sure you subscribe down below so you can join our family and never miss out on a new upload. Okay, I got a lot of people asking me how to look more feminine without makeup, how to look more feminine without hormones. Maybe they are in the closet, maybe they don't like makeup, maybe they're very much out and they just don't like to wear makeup. I know for me, when I first came out, I actually was, I was 14 and so I was not allowed to wear makeup. <laughs> and even before I came out, I still wanted to look feminine, but I couldn't really fully express myself. I couldn't present as a woman but there are ways to look more feminine without having long hair and makeup like I have in front of you right now. So in today's video, I'm gonna teach you my tips on how to look more feminine without makeup. So let's get into it. All right, first up is hair. Now, yes, before you say anything, I know, it's easy for me to talk because I have this luscious, beautiful long hair, <laughs> but hair makes a big difference at any length. Think about when you see a woman with a pixie cut, it's different than a man's haircut because it's just the way that it's cut, the way it frames their face is different. Go to a salon and ask for a pixie cut if you have to have short hair. One of the biggest changes I had when I first transitioned, I was growing my hair out, I had a side part and it was cute, but like it wasn't really, like some men still have long hair and it just wasn't giving what I needed it to. Do you guys remember, I talk about this like once a year when Gigi Gorgeous came on Mark Zuckerberg's internet and was like, my new look. And she's like, I got a tan and I parted my hair in the middle. Um, and then the next video was like, my entire facial reconstruction. <laughs> It was that very video that I was like, you know what? I need to part my hair in the middle and see how it looks. And I was stunned. Now, granted, it might not be for everybody. A middle part really doesn't suit everybody, but men typically don't have a middle part. They usually don't have like a, a perfectly placed middle part and stuff. Like there are a lot of ways that you can make your hair look more feminine without it being long. Yes, you can get wigs. Yes, you can get extensions. And I would definitely say to do that if you can. Another great way to present femininely is to heat style your hair. And that may be controversial for some people, like you don't need to heat style your hair at all, but typically the people that do heat style their hair are feminine, whether they're women or femme or whatever. Not everyone, there's definitely men that blow dry their hair, but whatever, you know what I'm talking about. Obviously be careful, you don't wanna damage your hair, but using some heat will make you present a little bit more femininely. Speaking of hair, we need hair removal. Hair removal is a big one when it comes to looking more feminine. And that actually brings me to today's sponsor, Catch Beauty. I have something super exciting to share with you. As a transgender woman, I used to struggle with so much unwanted body hair. Over the 10 plus years of my transition, I have tried just about every single expensive and painful way to remove unwanted hair. And I figured there must be a better way. That is when I discovered Catch Beauty. This right here has been a complete game changer for me. I've been using Catch Beauty for a while now and I cannot believe the results that I'm seeing. I mean, look at these before and after photos. Whoa. The best part is I got to do it from the comfort of my own home. No more awkward salon visits, no more painful treatments, just smooth skin on my terms. And girl, guess what? Catch Beauty now has this fantastic hair removal cream and growth inhibitor spray. The cream is so gentle, leaving my skin soft and hair free. And babe, the growth inhibitor spray, obsessed. I have noticed a big difference between the time that it takes for my hair to grow back. Catch Beauty is a transgender dedicated brand and I had to share with all of you because it has made such a difference in my life. So if you're like me and you are tired of the endless cycle of hair removal, go to catchbeauty.com slash discount slash rose and use the code rose at checkout for money off your order. Thank you so much to Catch Beauty for sponsoring this portion of today's video. Hair removal is a huge part of looking more feminine. Now, the the societal ties to women's body hair is a whole other discussion, and should women have to shave? No. Do women shave? Yes. At least where I live in the United States, yes, most women will, if they have extra hairy arms, they will usually wax or shave it. They will, you know, shave their underarms, their legs. For example, I have dark hair. This is my natural virgin hair. 
and my body hair was pretty close to the same. And now that I've used Catch Beauty, I don't have as thick hair anymore. Hair removal, whether it is laser, whether it's electrolysis, even just shaving or waxing, high key invest in waxing, just like wax strips. The hair on my thighs is very, very light. So I didn't have like a ton of hair, but it was enough to where I definitely needed to shave it. And when I would shave it, it would feel stubbly. It didn't feel good. Like it was just, it, it didn't, it was not the vibe. It's not the vibe. Stop. Now I wax my thighs. I, my legs, you know, I've, I've lasered, so they're nice and smooth. <laughs> so try waxing, try getting an epilator, which is like a machine that rips the hair out. You know what else I did before I came out? I had very, very dark arm hair and I was so embarrassed. I hated it so much. Well, it wasn't like that dark, but to me it was like thick, dark arm hair, but I was like, 13, anyway. I used to cut my own hair, and so I would buy like the hair razor, put up a picture right here, this kind of thing that thins out your hair. I had one of those, and I ran it on my arm, and it thinned out the hair. My parents, I was, again, I was like 13, and my parents wouldn't let me shave, but I got that, and they had no idea, because I still had arm hair. Like, they couldn't accuse me of shaving or waxing or anything, because it's like, she still has hair on her arm. So what's going on? You can also try bleaching maybe your your hair if you are in the closet and you're trying to find like a more subtle way to look more feminine. But let's talk about eyebrows. So my eyebrows, as you can see currently, they are, I mean, they're drawn on. I have real eyebrows, but I fill them in. So what I did with my eyebrows, I tweeze off the entire bottom section of my eyebrow. And so that way the top section looks like the bottom of my brows and I brush them up and I use like a, a spoolie of wax or whatever to keep them laminated up. And if you don't wanna do makeup, you can still do that. You can, and I'll touch on that in a minute, but like you can still style your brows. If nothing else, you can tweeze them. The reason why I do that method is because in facial feminization surgery, they go in and they raise your brows. And that is just classic like, men tend to have lower brows and women tend to have higher brows. Sure, you can do Botox. Sure, you can do all sorts of invasive procedures and that's great. But if you're not gonna do that yet, girl, you can still tweeze your brows. If nothing else, even if you're in the closet, tweeze your brows like in the center and like in the bottoms and stuff. Try to like clean it up. Next on the list of how to look more feminine without makeup is your clothing. I, again, I know I keep promising this, but I will be making a video all about building a wardrobe as a trans woman. That's just gonna take some time and it takes a lot of energy and effort and I'm working on it, I promise. What are things that you can change? What are things, um, uh, physical attributes that you can enhance or reduce? So for example, like uh, something that doesn't draw attention to your shoulders, but draws attention to your waist and your hips. You know what I'm saying? Like there are a lot of ways that you can use clothing to your advantage to look more feminine and to change your look without padding and makeup. If you are in the closet, if you cannot come out yet or you're still, you know, in, in, a, in a middle stage, which girl, we've been there, I get it. Women's clothing is different from men's. The way that it's cut is just different. So if you're gonna wear jeans and a t-shirt, you might as well wear women's jeans and a t-shirt, especially women's t-shirts. Like, you can wear like boyfriend jeans, you can wear like, you know, skinny jeans or whatever, but if you get just a t-shirt, a plain white tee and a woman's cut, it will look different than a man's white tee. Granted, it'll be more expensive and worse made, but it will make a difference in how you look and how other people perceive you. Also, people can't really call you out for dressing like a girl if you're just wearing like a white t-shirt. You know what I'm saying? This means feminine clothing. This means feminine outerwear. This means feminine shoes. This could even be like a, a woman's converse or a woman's, I don't know, Nike sneaker. I'm wearing, I wear slippers and heels. So feminine fabrics like satin or silk or something a little more soft and fuzzy, like a, a cashmere or something is really, really feminine. Even when you see it on a man, on a masculine man, it, it softens them. It gives them a sort of feminine look to them. They might not look like a woman, but it has like a, a feminine vibe to it. That's what you want to bring out. And whether you're out or not in men's or women's clothing, try to find textures and cuts and shapes that flatter your feminine body. Speaking of clothes, let's talk about accessories. One of my favorites, hands down, is nails. <laughs> have your nails done at all times. Now, not everyone can have their nails done. Not everyone's out of the closet and I get that. Also, I mean, a lot of gay men 
have full on acrylic nails. So if you're out as gay, like you could still probably get away with it. I don't know. Anyway, having your nails looking good in any sense of, of the word is more feminine and it will make you look more feminine. Make sure that your hands are looking right. You don't have to have acrylics. You don't have to have like gel polish and you know, chrome on, you, know, you don't have to have fancy nails. It could literally be you take care of your nails, you have a nail brush and like you, you scrub under your nails every single day and you have maybe a clear coat or you just buff them and make sure that they are looking good. Whatever it is, make sure that your nails look good, polished together. I will say it, longer nails are just more feminine. It just is. So if you can grow your nails out, that's another great way to look more feminine. Other accessories, earrings. Earrings always, I feel like earrings just make me look so much more girly, so much more put together. So when I have my earrings in, it immediately elevates an outfit. And this could be a, a cute little dangly earring, or again, if you're not out or whatever else, you can get, I don't know, maybe a diamond stud, a little hoop, like something small and androgynous. You have the feminine effect of an earring without it actually like being a dangly hoop, a diamond or whatever. Also necklaces. I hate a man in a necklace personally. I love necklaces. When I see a man wearing a necklace, I'm like, okay. So necklaces, bracelets, rings, anklets, toe rings. You not a toe ring. Don't do a toe ring actually. This could be your purse. This could be your back pack. This could be uh, your glasses. Ooh, let's talk about glasses. Glasses make a world of a difference when it comes to your look. Especially if you're wearing glasses every single day, you want to find a pair of frames that feminizes your face. I have a bigger face than average, I think. I mean, it's not that large. I'm I'm 5'9", so it, it fits my body, but I need larger glasses to really harmonize with my face. So consider getting some glass frames as your glasses. Also, more than anything else, look for feminine frames, look for feminine accessories, feminine hair accessories, bag accessories, feminine water bottles, feminine phone cases, everything around you should be feminine if you yourself are trying to be more feminine. Next up is skincare, honey. Make sure that you have a skincare routine down. A female skin and a male skin are different skin. And so you need to make sure that you are moisturizing every single day, your whole body, top to bottom. I literally every single day use moisturizer actually from my head to my toes, every single day. And my husband's always like, you're so soft. And I'm like, well, because I do my due diligence. Make sure you're taking care of both your face and body skin. Have a routine to make sure you're exfoliating any dead skin away. Make sure that you're nice and soft. Make sure you're moisturized, drink lots of water. When your skin is shining, it just gives off this like luminous sort of, um, for lack of a better word, fertile energy. You can add a little bit of sheen on your cheeks. Something like vitamin C is brightening. So if you want to brighten your face over time with no makeup, that will help to your skin to look just more shining and bright. Skincare is actually so much more important than makeup. So please, before you invest in makeup, invest in skincare. This canvas that we have, it has to last you lifetimes. So make sure you take good care of it. Speaking of makeup, let's talk about ways that you can look more feminine that aren't really makeup, but like are kind of on on the edge. Going off my second tip with hair removal, talking about brows, it really, brows just frame your face and it will change the way that people look at you. Even a small change in the brows can make a huge impact on the face. So once you finish tweezing your brows, Get a spoolie, get a, a clean, dry spoolie and brush your brow hairs up. If you feel like it, if you know, this is no makeup makeup, but if you feel like it, get a little bit of hair gel or a, a, a brow gel or something. I personally use got to be hair gel and I just kind of slick them up. You can draw them in if you want, but that's like actually makeup. Slick them up, draw a little line across to make sure that it's all even, you know, with zero pigment, it's just, swoop up and that will give you a lifted effect that is sort of like that cat eye that cat eye look that a lot of the the tea girls get when they get the surge another thing you can do is curl your eyelashes an eyelash curler is a game changer it actually was like only a year ago that i got my first one i used to curl my eyelashes when i lived at home with my parents when i was a kid i would take my mom's curler and like curl them and i was like <gasps> and once in a while my mom would be like did you curl your eyelashes and i was like no, but that's good enough of a difference to where it was noticeable. 
it, it lifts the eye. It really, it makes it look like you have lush, full lashes, which we associate with femininity. You don't have to put on mascara. You don't have to do anything. Just curl them up and make sure they look nice. If you feel like it, you can get them tinted. You can use a clear mascara. You can, don't use the hair gel on it. <laughs> you can use it on your brows, not your eyelashes. You can apply a tinted lip balm. Now that is sort of borderline makeup, so I'll leave that out, but you can either scrub your lips and that helps to promote the blood flow to your lips or put on a tinted lip balm. Another sort of kind of makeup, kind of not, is after your skincare, when you're all glowing and beautiful. I, when I'm not wearing makeup, but I still wanna look feminine and clean and put together, I will get a translucent powder, like a setting powder, and I will just set a couple areas, like maybe here on the face, like this little dip here or right underneath my eyes. What it does is it mattifies it. So it helps the eye to not see the changes in texture on your face, whether it's a bump like acne or something, or if it's in a structural difference in your face. For me, I, I don't like the dip in my nose here. I mean, it's really, it's, you know, we're all our own worst critics, but, and I also hate that I have a little um, like dent in my chin. So I tend to get some powder and I go over there, right on the chin and under the eyes because I have very dark, dark circles. There's no pigment, but it's enough to mattify it so that the rest of the skin is glowing and it still looks very healthy and radiant, but those areas aren't getting attention drawn to them. You can also use blotting papers. If you don't want to use makeup, if you don't want to use powder, you can just get a little paper and like put it on your face and it'll help to absorb any excess oils. You know, you could use a primer. Again, this is all teetering on makeup, kind of not, but you can use a primer that's pore blurring and it'll help to make your skin look more blurred and like a, a photo finish effect. But there's no pigment, so no one can call you out for wearing makeup because you're not actually wearing any. Next up, we have facial positioning. This is something that I never really hear anyone talk about, but this is a big one for me. I have always, I mean, I, I guess it's partially because I'm on camera a lot and I see myself like this all the time. If you practice holding your face in a certain way, just like your, your voice, like practicing your voice, it becomes second nature and it makes a big difference. So for me, two things that are very common with facial feminization surgery that I personally do with my face is I like to, yes, the brows with the, the tweezing and holding them higher and stuff, but I also tend to raise my brows just a little bit all the time. And I don't mean to <laughs> at this point, but I just do. See how if they're like lower, it just doesn't look as feminine, but if they're higher, it does. Like, I don't know. Also the cheeks. Cis women tend to have some more fat in the center of their face and their, their, the apples of their cheeks. So if you look from the side, you can see when you have a slight smile versus when you drop, it does have sort of a dip underneath the cheekbone. Now I do have high cheekbones, so that could be a contributing factor. But for me, I do like to have a little bit of a smile. This is how I hold my face all of the time. If I didn't put any thought into it, this is how I would hold my face. I know it sounds kind of psychotic to say that like, hold your face in a certain manner all the time, but seriously, it makes a really big difference and I don't think about it anymore. The only time I ever think about it is if I, for example, my man is looking at me from a three quarter angle and I'm like, oh, <laughs> lift those cheeks, bitch. <laughs> And lastly, lastly on the menu is mannerisms. Now this sort of includes voice, but we're not even touching on voice because we're talking about visuals. Your mannerisms and your manners are very important as a woman. In most societies, I mean, I, I live in the United States and at least here and in many other countries, women are taught to be kind, to be courteous. Back in the day, women often went to finishing school and to charm school and stuff to, to learn the niceties of being a woman and how to make people feel comfortable and safe and at home. And that's something that, although it's not taught enough, it's still expected of us. So if you have lived as a man, a male, a boy, <laughs> for all these years until now, you likely have some habits that you've picked up along the way, as I definitely did as well, and I, I'm, I'm 10 plus years into my transition and I'm still working on it, babe. Maybe you would sit, you know, hunched over and like, all like masculine before, but you have to change the way that you exist in the world in order to exist as a woman. And is it tiring? Yes. It's tiring for cis women too. Like the society expects so much of women and it's absolutely, it's just honestly ridiculous. It's not funny, but you can help but laugh. Society expects so much performance of women. And although I don't agree with that, 
That is a way to make yourself appear more feminine by adhering to those standards that are placed on the women around you. So be kind, be courteous, make sure that your actual physical mannerisms are also feminine. Like I said, don't slouch, like don't have your legs spread on the bus, like taking up all this space. Make sure that you are sitting up straight. Um, don't scream over people like the way that you eat, I think also says a lot about who you are, how feminine you are. In order to be perceived as feminine, you have to put in the work. So if you do all of these things and you practice feminine mannerisms, I promise that even without makeup, even without hormones, you will be perceived as more feminine. Yes, makeup makes a big difference in making you present more feminine, but it can also be overboard. So it's important that in addition to learning how to do a brow or a cut crease or put on a lash, it is just as honestly, if not more important, that you learn how to look feminine outside of this drag that you paint on and be this feminine woman 24 seven. This isn't a tutorial on how to be a woman. I'm not dictating any of this. And you know, if you don't do some of this, it doesn't mean you're any less feminine. But hopefully these tips are more accessible and they're something that should cost you zero to very little money to put into play. Just because you aren't wearing makeup or just because maybe you aren't out or even on hormones doesn't mean that you deserve to look any less feminine and to feel any less comfortable in your body. So. If if for whatever reason you aren't wearing makeup or you can't wear makeup or maybe you can't go on hormones or can't come out or even if you're like me you want to look more feminine outside of having makeup on i really hope this video helped you and helped you to understand ways that you can do it yourself for again zero to very little dollars if you enjoyed this video please make sure you give it a big thumbs up and share it with anybody else who might benefit from it it really helps my channel out so much and i love making content for all of you you are all amazing thank you so much for spending time with me and until i see you next week good luck i love you bye